Peace. I'm here with Renee and we're partaking in another subject. And today we're going to be addressing a Pacific elder in the Taino community. Uh, this was pretty interesting because he put up a post on a video you did on the relationships between the Kalinago and the Taino. So what, what, what's, your, what's your take on that? Um, and I saw the post that he made. It was just, um, to me, it was pretty much ridiculous to to post my uh, my video and try to put me on a blast on the internet instead of like um, messaging me and, and disagreeing with me but what he does is he posts my video and uh, you know he just he, what he says is that it's, whatever I'm saying is just speculations yeah it's speculations but there's a lot of facts in it yeah, because um, I did my research just, just to clarify this um, and I'm going to put it out there I'm going to put his name out there this is in regards to what uh, Pedro Juanaquillo Torres, an uh, 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 elder in the community, I'll say it that way, was saying in regards to the language. And basically what he was saying that uh, it was, it's just basically an assumption that there is a relationship between the Carib, or more properly speaking, the Kalinago, and the Taino language. Exactly. He said that in the, in the post. He said what he was saying is... Which is pretty weird because a lot a lot of scholars will disagree with him. He said that comparing Arawak language with Taino and Kalinago is not the way to go. But the Taino language is an Arawakan based language. So how are you not uh, based a uh, uh, Arawakan language with an Arawakan language? It doesn't make it, it doesn't make any sense. So I think that what, what I think what his problem is maybe he has not discovered or he wants to be he wants to be the the person to discover this. And he, since he wasn't, he wants to put my video up there. And this is some kind of envy or, or some so, kind yeah, of Yeah, just, just to make another you know? point, and I can throw the screenshot in the video. He, he says, as he um, gives his dissertation on it, uh, he says, he brings up the, the Lakota language, right? And he says that the Lakota language, for example, the Lakota, the Dakota, and the Nakota, they come from a family of Lakota languages and they can be compared. So basically what he's saying is that us, as opposed that the Lakota languages can be compared, um, the Taino language, the classic Taino language of the Greater Antilles cannot can be compared with other Arawakan and Kailanago uh, dialects. Which he kind of, as you can see, kind of contradicts himself. There, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because um, to me, what, uh, what I think, you know, he got pissed off at me because uh, he blocked me and deleted me. Because when he posted my video, I, I commented on his video, and uh, I just said that I've seen his dictionary. I mean, I don't know if anybody out there ever seen his website, his dictionary website, and they've been used it. But some of his stuff is, is it seems pretty made, made up. And uh, um, I remember years ago he, he told me that he, he I don't know I don't know if this is a lie or anything like that, but that he when he was in college, yeah, internship, and he went to Amazon. And he studied with the natives there, with the South American natives. I, I, I don't know what to believe him or not because, like I said, he makes up a lot of things up. And a lot of things that I see where he does, too, he likes to make, post a lot of things about uh, people bashing him. And, and I think right. he makes a lot of things up. If just I can just throw my opinion on it, it's interesting that you just said that because if he indeed studied with the uh, Amazonian communities um, in respects to them, you know... He would not have. I feel that he has more of a, a Lakota presence than an Arawakan presence, because if if this is a resurgence in trying to revive uh, uh, a Taino um, uh, hierarchy, meaning um, a, a Taino or uh, Arawak based culture, then obviously the way to go is to study um, the South American communities, because they're in more in close relationship when you study the language and, and the oral um, uh, narrations, you know, they all have a relationship with each other. Just like um, with the article that you and George did on the word Taino, you gave examples that the word Taino corresponded with many words from the Kalinago and the Garifuna and also the Lakono. Exactly. And, uh, um, I've made a lot of references of all this research I've done. I did, I did a lot of references of all the books that I've done. And um, it's, it's common sense. It's, it's common knowledge. All you got to do is just buy, these, buy the books and do your own research, and, and the evidence is there. Um, he just got mad because in his, in his dictionary, he has 
as uh, he has Tai uh, Tai Wei. I don't know if you've ever seen that as Good Morning. And um, I remember telling him that that that, uh, that doesn't make any sense to me. You know, he got kind of offended by it because of the video that, uh, of course, that we stated that Tai doesn't mean good, and it doesn't. You know, the evidence is there. It's, there's, there's no Arawakan language that fit the prefix Tai in any way. If, if Taino is so close of an Arawakan based, how come I don't see Tai or, or anything in good in any uh, like uh, Locono, Wajiro, uh, or um, uh, Kalinago, anything that's so related to the Taino language? I don't see that as meaning good. The only word that ever means good and that's very similar is Han, Han, as we always say Han, Han Kutu. And in Locono, they say sun. You see, they, so it doesn't make any sense. This, in Locono and, 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 and Kainaga, they don't have Thai as good. So, I mean, it's there. You know, it's, it's, it, was, it, was a, it was a concept that was made up by the Europeans. It was a misconception that um, uh, Dr. Chanka has uh, uh, phonetically um, heard that he thought that it meant good because... You know, that's what Europeans did when they came to the islands. That's what they did. They mis, um, misheard something and, and, and right away they assumed this, this, that this is the definition of this. It's like, for example, of Nitaino, right? Columbus, when he goes to the Dominican Republic, um, he thought the word Nitaino means nobility. Because he misheard um, the word Nitaino being similar, phon phonetically similar to the word Hidalgo or Nitaino. Because in, 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 in Europe, Hidago means nobility. So of course, to the, to the people who are from there, all they know about is nobility, royalty, and kingship. So he goes into an island, these beautiful people, and he goes and sees this chief with, uh, with feathers who look like some, a royalty or a, nobil, uh, or a noble person because he sees uh, his own people kind of like worshipping him in some way. And he assumes that this person is noble, so he thinks, you know, okay. Like he said in his diary, he says, they use, an, um, they use another word for personage. You don't know if it means governor, judge, or hidargo. So he didn't know what the word means. It's right there in his, in his diary. So he really thought Nitaino and hidargo is the same, but it's not. And what it means is my relatives. Because I've traced this with uh, Kalinago. i traced this with um, Locono. In Kainago, they say, uh, ni tenyo, ni taino, it's the same thing, my relatives. In Locono, they say, dayono, my relatives. In Garufuna, they say, um, hiduhenu, my relatives. And Ruben Reyes, who was a, uh, uh, I use him as a reference all the time, because him and George are good friends, and I used to speak with him now and then too. And he even told me too that hiduhenu and ni taino is the same thing. Um, and it means my relatives or my blood relatives. And in the Garufana language, they have as ni um, tainu, meaning my blood relatives, because the ni means my. And then you have ita, which means blood. Right, correct. Right, you see what I'm saying? So my blood or my relatives. So, I mean, there has to be a similarity. It's, it's, it's common knowledge to, to compare these two languages. Right, they, now that you say there, that, let, you know? let, let me go off with what uh, Pedro said in regards to that. He says that if the Taino language had other various surviving dialects of the same language to compare our dialect with others, then this idea could be correct. Now, taking that stance, that would make me, me as an observer, question his stance in regards to the language. What exactly is he studying? Is he just studying the language languages alone from the chronicles or he is he disregarding other research I think my opinion is is that um, I don't I don't I don't know <laughs> I'll be honest with you because every time uh, he would he would he would say something and I do and I I, I, mean, I mean I don't challenge him what I do is I, I tell him listen I, I disagree he never um, stands his ground what he does he will make a comment and delete it he just, I don't know if he has any evidence or any, uh, uh, any scholar, scholarship on his back. I don't know because he says he did. He says he's a linguist. So show me. I mean, I'm not, I'm not here to say I'm all right. Yeah, you know, it's all theorized, but prove me wrong. I mean, I'm not a, 
I'm not afraid to be proven wrong at all. You know what I mean? So show me. But what he does is he just delete his comment, and that's all he does. He doesn't stand his ground. Yeah. What I also see, also, if I can just say this, is that he presents what he has in, in regards of the language, and and is basically saying that. Okay, well, this is my take on the language. You either take it or leave it, and you have to take it for face value and not question it. Yeah. Another thing is that look, I, I've I've done a lot of research on it. I'm not a, I'm not a linguist. I'm not a. Uh, I'm just I'm just a researcher. Is what I do. I love to do it. I love to read a lot of books. And um, I've the word Taino. I've 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 been kind of skeptical with it for a long time. I mean, if I'm I can just say this quickly, and as a disclaimer, this is not just to discredit his uh, position in, in, in the community, but rather just to um, bring up into the forefront the subject of language, you know, because we're in, the info we're in the information age right now, so a lot of people are hung hungry to rediscover about their heritage. And, you know, and part of what's not really out there is is the scholarship. That's true. Um, I've met a few linguists. I've met um, people who have scholars. I mean, like PhDs, and um, they agree with me. And I don't. I don't try to be some kind of like uh, some kind of smart ass or anything like that. I just tell them, listen. Um, I just go to them and say, can I ask you a question? I want you to tell me what you think. And they always say, oh, wow, Renee, you know what? I think you have something here, you know? And these are people with PhDs, you know? So, I mean, I don't know how many people went up to him. I don't know how many people he has as his reference as PhDs. He says he has, like, some kind of uh, a linguist background. I don't know, you know? I mean, the point for is we all want to collectively move forward. And this mm -hmm. is what we were um, uh, bringing up in regards to the silliness in the Taino community. You know, people want it to initiate arguments, but don't make any points to so we can all collectively move forward because this is what we're interested in. So if I, I just want to throw out, you know, an example from the movie Embrace of the Spirit, you know, you had a, 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 a missionary who was portraying himself among uh, the native community as a messiah figure, you know. So when in that movie, when the natives discover that he wasn't really uh, 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 a representative for the community, you know, he, he lost face value because he was just presenting himself as something that um, he wasn't, just something that, um, just like Jesus, portraying himself as a, a, a Jesus among the community, you know? I think what I see in him is that, you know, um, he, he's very, um, I'll, give you, I'll give you a short story. When I was young, when I was researching about this whole Taino thing, um, I was like maybe, I don't know, 15. And this is when the internet was so uh, popular, anything like that, and AOL. So I, re I was researching about Taino. And he was the first person ever that I researched in the in Taino, in Taino, in Taino movement. He did it first in anything. I mean, I was like, wow. I mean, look at this guy. This guy says he's Taino. He's 100% Taino. He speaks the language. I was telling my mom, I said, mommy, look, this guy says he's Taino. When I, about a couple of years later, I was, I don't know, I'm like 26, 27 tops. I saw him on my Facebook. I was like, oh, shit. Send him a message. Like, hey, Mr. Torres, you know, it's a pleasure to meet you. I sent him a message. Uh, listen, uh, because of you, I've been, uh, you know, I, because of you, I, I, you're the one who strike that, that fire for me to, uh, to research my roots. And the first thing he does is he sends me this message. He goes, listen, first of all, I don't like to go by Mr. I don't go by Mr. Sir. Or Mr. Torres, it's either I'm a chief or a true Nitaino bloodline. It's either you call me Don Pedro, Cacique, or Chief. So I looked at him like, what the f? I said, okay, Mr. Torres, <laughs> uh, I'll talk to you later. So after that, I just never really spoke to him again. But after, after that, I started kind of like debating with him. There was a debate, I have a few debated with him a few times. And what he would do is, after you debated, he would make a post about you. You know, saying, oh, you know, you got these young Tainos disrespecting the elder who's been there since 40 something years. I don't know. But, well, uh, just, just speaking on that, right, there's another point he was saying, and um, 
he was saying, okay, so he says that to compare the classic Taino, right, and what we mean by the classic Taino, we're talking about the Taino language as opposed with uh, the island of Kiskea and Hati and, and Borinquen, respectively, right? The, that's the That would be classified as the classic Taino. So he, uh, Pedro was saying that to compare the classic Taino with the Kalinago and other Arawak languages, it's not the way to go. Um, I think that's ridiculous because um, a lot of a lot of scholars like um, Douglas Taylor, Neil Whitehead, Peter Humes, all these great linguists who've been doing this way before him. They've been doing that for years. They've been tracing a lot of Taino languages with. Uh, with Arawak languages for years. That's the only way you can understand it because our Taino is an Arawak based language with some Carib words and a little bit of some uh, sprinkle of Central American words. A great example is, for example, um, the word, um, how can I put it? Gothi, right? It means what? Moon. In other languages, you have Kati, moon. In Lokono, it's Kati. If I'm mistaken. And in Taino, we have as, I think it's Kachi. And in Lokono, they have it as Kauhi or Koti. And it means moon. I mean, it, it's, it, you, see, you see, you can see the similarities, right? Right. And then you have Koguyo. And Puerto Rico say Koguyo for a lightning bug. And in Kalinago, they say Goguyo. And in Lokono, they say Kokuyi. Or Arawak, and they say Kokuyi. So how, is, how can you say... It's the wrong thing to do to not compare Kainago with Arawak and base languages. If you can see the similarity comparisons from that and, and, and those those three languages alone. Um, there's one example I want, want to make that he said. Um, he says that as such, uh, these things are not written, not pronounced, nor spelled or spoken in the same way. I guess he's basically talking about the phonetics. You know, and using that, for example, we already showed examples of uh, how Atabe and Atabera is related to Arawakan languages. Oh, oh, of course, Atabe. Um, and Arawakan, for example, I think is one of the, one of the Arawakan branch languages. You have this, this, this word called Atabeyu, like Atabe. Atabe is considered as the mother, uh, the mother's uh, water spirit, right? Or the goddess of the waters, right? She's the birth mother, right? Um, and the Arawakan word, this Arawakan word is called Atebeyu or Adebeyu. It means womb or belly. You see? Or Ate means mother too. Right. You see what I'm saying? And some of the, the, the Arawakan languages. So, how can you say you can't compare them? It doesn't make any sense. I mean, to me, he's, it looks like, you know, he just said it in, in one of his posts that the, he, he based, he gave a good, he, he was comparing the Lakota with, you can't compare that. It's totally different languages. Um, if I'm mistaken, he's concentrates more on the Lakota than anything else. You know, he he, can, he incorporates a little bit of the Lakota of North American um, practices into his, and he calls it Taino. You know, I remember I saw one of the North American guys uh, called him out, um, named David Martinez. I mean, I'm not I'm gonna say his name or anything like that, but it's the truth. Who said that um, he was actually bashing Puerto Ricans and, and Taino people because this guy kind of gave us kind of a bad rap about it and this guy saying that you know I saw it online he was bashing Puerto Ricans he was calling us uh, wannabe Indians and, and, and everything else I was like I couldn't say anything about it because you know that's that wasn't really uh, um, um, my my part to engage in but uh, what I did was I sent that conversation to a friend and a friend of mine approached the guy you know and uh, I won't get into that but uh, it's a funny story but you know that's all I can say for now. It was, uh, it's was a long story from there. Yeah, but all in all, it, um, in closing, you know, we're just trying to make the point is, you know, in order to understand the classic Taino languages and the words that, that was documented by the chroniclers, you have to study the other Arawakan-based languages because that's the only way, as Renee stated, that you're going to get a grasp and what um, uh, these words mean. Like for example, in regards to Taino, uh, in regards to uh, the word Atabe, also uh, Itiba, Kawababa, like the word Ita means blood, yeah, blood, you know? So it's very important 
to compare and contrast and and this is what we call making a correspondence and by making a correspondence you're gonna come close to um, finding the roots and what these uh, words mean and also at the same time deciphering the, the meanings behind each word I think because now that you know that um, you know the Taino language or the culture it hasn't died but some of it has right so now it's now that we are all trying to bring that back right so by studying other other groups that's kind of have a relation to us we can bring that back because we can compare right we can read in the chronicles and say oh wait a minute this seems kind of right like for example in the story of Guanyahuna right in Gua Bonito, right um, there's a similar story in the Wajiro and the, the, the Arawak language right um, a story of Arawanili who went into a journey I think I said this in the last video you did but I will say it again goes into a journey and uh, sees a woman in, in, in this ocean saves her but this water spirit is called Ore, Orehu or in a Taino mythology her name was Guapunito and uh, she gives him displeasure uh, and she gives him these Sibibis in the Taino language in the Taino mythology but it doesn't say what the Sibibis are for it just says he uses the Sibibis uh, these are little tiny rocks but in the the Arawakan story, she gives him rocks for the maracas, and he becomes the first shaman. Uh, maracas are used for um, for a lot of shamans when they take away bad spirits. And uh, Arawanili is where the him is where the word Arawak comes from, from the story, because he's the first hero, he's the first shaman. And the same goes for Wab um, Wayahona. You see what I'm saying? Right. So you can see the comparisons, you can see the similarities between cultures. So you, you don't you can't com, uh, you can't compare that with Lakota. There's no way. Yeah, if I can you just know? give my stance on that, uh, what the people has to understand, there's a difference in studying uh, uh, a social hierarchy. What I mean by that is when you study uh, uh, a culture in regards of in antiquity and the present, you know, when you study their oral tradition, which can also be interpreted as uh, cosmology. You know, basically talking, basically talking about narrations that elaborates on their traditions, right? You know, you see uh, these connections. Like when you study the 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 narrations from the chroniclers, they 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 marry harmoniously with the oral traditions from the Kalinago and Arawak cultures, such as the Lokono. Uh, the Wanani and stuff like that you know you, you're gonna see a lot of parallels but f for someone who is not studying um, these other communities that are in relationship to the classic Taino there's gonna be a lot of things that you're gonna miss and this is an important thing to uh, to bring out and, and and also that's not what a cacique does a cacique doesn't bash uh, people and post videos of them and uh, wants people to approach him like he's some kind of a high authority. It's not what Kasika does. A Kasika serves its people. You know what I'm saying? Like my friend Lewis said once uh, in one of the posts I've seen. This is a Kasika, when they're serving food, the Kasika takes the food first because the food could be poisoned. So he tastes it first because he dies for his people. Right? You see what I'm saying? Right. So, a cacique serves his people. He doesn't, well, well people, he, he wants people to serve him. Right, like he right. He wants to be this and nobility type right, of Right, because mm -hmm. from my understanding, uh, a cacique is a public advocate because he, he works uh, for the people and giving direction in how uh, a community should go about. Exactly. You know? And he does it the reverse way. He wants people to, to bow to him. I'm about to know, you know, Kasika or not. But anyways, um, he's a guy that uh, he wants to take credit for everything, as far as my understanding. And I told him, I said, listen, you know, uh, a lot of not a lot of people agree with your dictionary. Yeah, you have some of the stuff that I've seen that's similar, but they're from Luis Aquino Hernandez's book, the Dictionary of Puerto Rico. Um, the the Cuban guy, what's his name again from the the dictionary? Uh, Alfonso. 
right? Afon Afonso Zayas. Zayas. Yeah. You can see the same thing in his book. You can see the same thing about Fia Pide's book. They all have the same. Yeah, if I can just say, you know, a lot of us that come up um, in the title movement, especially in uh, our generation, you know, we come across Pedro's uh, uh, dictionary online. And that's not to bash it. It's just what we're trying to explain is, you know, we're more exposed to the broader information, meaning we have easier access to get some documents that um, they were probably able to get at that time. Like, for example, uh, this journal by Alegrea that you have that gives examples and shows documentation between uh, the Kalinago and the Tain. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot of discrepancies that they, um, that Karas may not be in Puerto Rico, but um, in the, the, the book I have, in the journal that of Alegrea, he references a lot. He referenced Castellano. He referenced a lot of stories that there were Caribs there who are actually um, corresponded with the Taino people and also lived with them. And also, there was a, there was a story with that when the Europeans came, there were Caribs who were uh, woodlawners in the island before. And, and isn't also um, the Kalinago men married the, 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 the Arawak women? Yes, and um, yes, that's another thing. Um, you see, the Kalinago, the Carib, I, I can't say Carib because they don't go by Carib anymore, and that's only respect of the, the people of those islands. They don't call themselves Carib. It's now they call themselves Kalinago, so it's kind of a disrespectful thing when you call them Caribs. So um, the Kalinagos, um, they were they, they they went up to other islands to take women. These women were Arawak women. They could call them uh, pre tiny pre tiny women. Um, anyways, uh, they would the men would marry them, have babies, and the woman would speak Arawak to the kids and Carib to the man. But you got to remember, there was more than one language spoken in that society. It wasn't only bilingual. It was probably, it could be more than trilingual. It could be four languages. But right. I remember I read in a journal, and I would like to say this also, mm -hmm. there was an Arawak woman in Guyana who in 1938, she was the last woman to speak seven dialects. That's right. I remember you telling me that. That's right. And in the Kainago, they spoke maybe five because there were accounts that... Uh, that the chiefs, the old Carib, I mean, well, the old Kainago people, um, spoke a different language that the even their own people didn't understand it. So, they were more than one dialect. Looking in DR, they had uh, Macoris, Higher Loa, Siguayo, Wayahata Bay, Sibone, Taino. I mean, they had different dialects. So, the, the Kainago, the women, Actually, the women would call themselves Kalino, uh, Kalino Nan. I might say it wrong, but Kalino Nan, and that means it's an Arawak word, and it means people of the of the Kasawa clan. The Taino people uh, from DR, especially, were Kasawa makers. They were Kasawa, They were efficient in Kasawa making. And now that you bring that up, you know, and you still have people in DR. Who are oh, still yeah. practicing making cassava bread? Are still practicing in places people never been. Like my friend George Jorge Estevez, who's to me he's the top Taino researcher in the East Coast, went to places in DR. He recorded this: people making cassava bread in the way, the same tradition that they did 500 years ago, maybe more. But the word Kalinonan, me or Kalinonan, means uh, people of the cassava clan. Those were, and the men will call themselves Kalinago. Another thing I want to say. Of this word carrot or okay um, when Columbus went to DR uh, this is for people who don't know when he went to DR he recorded the word Ganima or Ganiba and this is where the carrot comes from uh, he, he recorded this the, the, of the people who lived there these natives that they, they said that they thought when, they, when the Europeans came the Taino people thought that they were the Ganima or Ganiba and the Spanish Call them carob because they call them ca ca uh, uh, cannibal or like cannibal. I mean cannibal. This is where the word cannibal comes from. But what people don't understand is that the Spanish mis misheard. The Taino people knew the tribal name of those Kalinagos, and what they were saying uh, was Kalina, not Caniba or Canina. It was Kalina. 
This is where the word Kalinago comes from. Right. Because they're originally from the South American people called the Kalina. And the Kalinago also knew the Taino people's tribal name. And you can research this. All you got to do is buy the book. It's called uh, Wild Mathis Cheese. It's there. It's in the account. The Kalinago people called us uh, Arawakas or Arawaks. It's there. That's what they call the Taino people. Right. And so how can he say right. that uh, our language is not similar to... Right. And they also say in that you know, book that the Arawaks were the first to populate have, the island. Yes. And the accounts, they were uh, the French recorded that these people... Uh, the Car the Kalinago at the time told them that they were people there before them, the first inhabitants. They didn't have a name for them, they just called them the first inhabitants. Uh, the Arawaks, of course. Uh, the scholars call it Aidi people. Uh, Aidi means man. Um, but uh, they were people for thousands of years. But I would just say these uh, first inhabitants. And these were the, the Arawak people. You know? So. We did have a tribal name. It wasn't Taino. It was Arawak. Uh, Daniel Brinton, I love his, uh, I love his concept. He calls us Island Arawak because we were different. You know, we we different. We we in the islands. You know, so I don't understand how can he say that um, you cannot uh, trace Taino with Arawak people if in the accounts he even says that you know we were Arawak. Right, and let me just uh, say this. Uh, in respects to the, to the Lakota, how are you going to know about Taino spirituality in general if you're not studying the culture itself? Exactly. Exactly. You know, there's a, there's a lot of things that you can you can um, you can find when you research. Just do your research. That's all I can say is do your research. You know, um, I'm not making this up. This is only from stuff that I've been reading. You know, I'm no, I don't make this up. I, I reference. Uh, a lot of guys, you know, the article I've done with George Estevez on the word Taino, the origins of Taino. It's theory. It's all theorized, but it could be theorized, but, and it also could be academically, um, uh, how can I say, uh, an ac academically, uh, uh, there's another word, I'm just, I don't have the word right now, but proven, um, because uh, I've used... And also, I send it to many people who have PhDs, and they read it, and they said, this is really, this is good stuff. And isn't uh, Kisa you know? Joseph, she's also a linguist, Kisa Joseph, right? she's a, uh, a Kalinago linguist. And I speak with her most all the time. So I use her as a reference. And she could see, it's right there, clear as day. And, I, and I, I speak with her most all the time, and she's there all, she even agrees with me. You know, that um, Taino don't mean good or anything like that. And I used to use her because she still speaks the language. And I used to ask her like, when, when I first read, um, when I first found the word Nitinyon, or Nitinyon, there's different words of spelling it. And she said it in her dialect. And when I heard it, I was like, wow. Wow, is this, you can hear. You can, it's just like the Taino. Same way. You can, see, you can hear the pronunciation. And I told her, I said, you think this is it? You know what she told me? I thought you guys knew this. That's what she told me in, in the text, I remember. She said, I thought you knew that. I said, no, ain't, nobody in the Taino community knows this. But this is coming from a Kalinago woman who only pays attention to the Kalinago. Right. Because she don't know much about the right. Taino movement as much. You right. know what I mean? Which you can't blame her, you know. It's now that she's learning about the Taino. She thought we may, we knew this already. Right. No. You know? So, um, the word Taino means people or friends or, uh, or relatives. It comes, it's the short version of Ni Tain. And Ni Tenyong, the short version of Ni Tenyong is Tenyong. And it means progenitor, it means ancestor, friend, or uh, family. And Lokono, they say Saino, which is not with a T, with an S. It means amigo. You can, you, can search, you can search this all you want. But it's not to say that we can't use the word Taino, we could. You know, we could still use it to describe ourselves, whatever you want. I'm not trying to bash anything like that. But what I'm just trying to tell you, tell people, is that this, it just doesn't mean good people. It wasn't our tribal name, it wasn't our clan name. But we are the people. That's what it's trying to tell you, that we are the people. We right. People. So I'm getting what you're saying is that by studying the other um, respective 
uh, dialects and languages, um, we could come to a better understanding of what uh, those words mean. Exactly. Okay. Exactly, yes. You know. So, um, I mean, I don't know if he, done, if he did the same research or not. I don't know if... I haven't. I personally haven't seen anyone of, uh, who did went kind of that deep researching this word in the word Taino. Uh, but uh, because you know Taino has a variety of uh, words, you know, so it's hard to really stick to one. But I went and I started digging in, and then, uh, that's what I found. I mean, I was helping George. I mean, George actually, you know, he was like Renee, you know, um, let's try to break this word down. You know, I said okay. So I've just was reading lots of books. I I, you, I think you already know, and right. a lot of languages books and and and. and South American Amazon books and trying to find it and, uh, and that's how I came across with what I found alright so with that said um, until the next discussion and we're just gonna I'm just gonna say that you know um, these are things that we have to start being more a little more open minded to and take it into um, consideration because what happens a lot as we, we discussed in the previous video you know, a lot of emotions get turned up when it comes to the Taino diaspora. You know, so we have to um, stop taking things a little personally and just take the time to listen to each other. Because maybe that's what's needed, you know. You know, we need to have this uh, conversation. And if people that are out there that are not encouraging this, you know, then, like I said, you're your stance has to be questioned because what's needed right now in the Italian community is dialogue. So with that, I'm going to say peace.